The second is to say that, honestly, I think I can look at every single consumer facing business that has failed in the past 25 years, or at least every consumer facing business of note, brands that you would recognize that have failed. And I genuinely believe you can bring it all back to a lack of customer centricity in a number of areas. Whether that's because, you know what, they just weren't selling the right products or services anymore. Think back to Blockbuster. I used to go to Blockbuster Video every Friday night. I was always excited about it. <clears throat> go there, get my three for the price of two. I get some tubs of ice cream. I get some chocolate and some sweets. And we'd be lined up for what we were going to watch over the weekend. And then, of course, that became, you know, DVDs. And they just lost sight. They weren't close enough to customers. So they didn't see how customer behavior was changing. They didn't see the rise of Netflix and on-demand content or people now engaging online to secure their DVDs. They were too slow to change. They were even offered the opportunity to buy Netflix in 2001 for $50 million. Well, they didn't. And sadly, you know, a decade later, they went out of business. Who'd have, who would have imagined Toys R Us would have ever gone out of business? The biggest toy retailer in the world. The list goes on. There's a plethora of brands that have gone out of business because either they didn't sell the right product, they didn't have the right service, they didn't invest in digital and e-commerce and see the channel migration and the opportunities through that. They didn't join up their channels to have an omni-channel sort of you know, single view of the customer type experience where they could make sure that customers got the right experience no matter where they started and finished their journey. Um, they weren't focused on delivering the right level of uh, convenience. Marketing was always focused on the top of the funnel and not on loyalty, not on building customer lifetime value, not on giving people reasons to continue to come back and so on and so forth. And the problem with all of this is as well, that even just at a product level, you know, 1994 was the first e-commerce transaction, but e-commerce has basically driven proliferation of choice. Prior to 1994, as a consumer, you had limited choice. You had high street stores, you had online, you, sorry, you didn't have online, you had high street stores, you had the odd catalog, or you had a retail park to go to, a retail park and maybe an out of town shopping center. But that was it. In terms of brand choice, it was pretty limited. Whereas now, if you don't like the experience you've had with any given brand in any given sector, there are thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of choices, literally a couple of clicks of your mouse away and then almost instantaneously. So there is nowhere to hide now and consumers are very smart. They know that they, they hold the balance of power. So you've got to work harder than ever to convince them to give you their loyalty.